Hey, it's great to have you with me this morning. I love these morning times as we dive into one truth. And we've got to talk about it enough to begin to help you to think about it, meditate on it, get it deep down in your heart. Confess what you're hearing. Think about when this. When I'm done today, just spend a few more moments, another five or 10 minutes, just think about it. How does this affect your life? What can you see this promise changing within you? And, and literally ask Holy Spirit to help you get rid of lies and ignorance and let truth comes in because truth sets you free. Today, I want to talk about God is not limiting you. Everywhere I go, I get this thing from people that, you know, wherever they are, well, God knows what I need. And if this is what I've got, this is what God wants me to have. Now, that, that's a ridiculous uh, thought. One person told me, well, you know, I know I need a job. God knows I need a job, so he'll get me one when it's time. Until then, he's going to collect unemployment and just do what he wants. See, that's ridiculous. God is not limiting you. God is not deciding how poor you are. He's not deciding how wealthy you are. And I'm going to show you in the Word. Here we go. All right. Proverbs 22 and verse 2. The rich and poor have a common bond. The Lord is the maker of them all. Now, this is not saying he makes poor people. No. He's just saying that the Lord just makes people, and then they have to make a decision as to what they're going to do. In Matthew 5, 45, it says, It rains on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and on the unjust. So it's saying here, that when I first read that, I went, well, that bugs me. you saying God's blessing those who don't serve him or know him. Yeah, he's actually saying that the principles of blessing, there are universal principles in our world that there's rain and there's sunshine. So for the farmers, if you don't have seed in the ground, guess what? The rain and the sunshine's not helping you get ahead at all. If the Bible's going to say that it rains on the just and the unjust, the sun shines on the just and the unjust, and in those days, agriculture was the way everyone prospered pretty much. Uh, it, was an, it was a real agricultural type. Uh, society. And so to get ahead, sunshine and rainfall determined everything. And so if you see somebody that you don't respect uh, because they don't know God, they don't read the Bible, they can be evil, this and that, but they're prospering hand over fist, they have to be obeying some kind of principle. So when we're talking about God's not limiting you, this is a crucial principle to understand because everyone I know, you know, kind of blames God. Well, this is who I am and this is where I was born into and this is what it's like. Um, but the Bible's filled with stories of men and women against all kinds of odds, breaking through containment, prospering, breaking free from military uh, coups, etc. Even the story of the spies in Canaan, you know, uh, Moses sent in 12 spies. God had already said, Canaan is yours. The 12 spies went in. 10 came back filled with fear because of the problems they found getting into Canaan. And two came in and said, let's go get it. Let's go get it. Here's what's interesting. Every person in Israel was given the promised land and promised it's yours. But when they begin to hear or they begin to run into obstacles, did you know that almost every one of them, except for two, lost faith, literally wanted to stone Moses and go back into slavery. So although they were all promised and they were all given the promised land, a land that flows with milk and honey, etc., we know they had to travel in the desert for 40 years till everybody over 20 died off because they wouldn't believe the promises of God. And by wouldn't believe, I mean they instead focused on fear. They focused on, on there's no way I could do that. The giants are so big. The problems are so complex. And so it wasn't God that limited Israel. It wasn't God limiting the 10 spies. It was their own fear. When they were walking and spying out the land, they should have remembered, God said it's mine. God said it is mine. That giant is big. My God is bigger. Those walled cities are thick, but my God is stronger. They should have maintained this spirit of faith that God had done with taking out of Egypt all the things God did to free them from the most powerful country in the world. 
but they let go of believing and trusting God, and they begin to believe they couldn't do it. So here's a great example that just because the promises of God are here for us all, we need to focus on Jesus, and we need to focus on that we're qualified for them. We need to continue to trust God. Hebrews 3.12 literally says that unbelief is a sin. Why is it a sin? Because unbelief is not trusting God, not trusting what God said. And God is often telling us here that unbelief is a sin, and we've got to trust Him, we've got to believe Him. So this one thought I want to leave with you, God is not deciding whether or not you succeed or don't succeed. God is not limiting you. There's not a whole group of people that God has just said, you're never going to have more than barely enough. I have decreed that. That's not in the Bible. Instead, it says in Peter that he has blessed us, that he has given us all things that we'll ever need uh, for, for life and for godliness. So I want to challenge you, lose the thought that God's decided this, and you begin to believe. Lift up your head. Look out. Let God's word change you on the inside and begin to break through every boundary. Get your head up through every ceiling that maybe your family has had for generations. I don't know. And Go live the blessed life. Well, whatever platform you're joining us from, be sure to share with others. Make sure that your friends and family are getting this as well. It's going to help them immensely.